In fact, I'll give you one more reason why India won't be in a hurry to bail Sri Lanka out, its own domestic situation. The Indian economy is also facing a challenging period, especially the startup sector. The last few years have been great for Indian startups, plenty of investments, decent profits and sky high valuations. You could call it the summer of success. But now the mood is changing. Indian startups are now staring at a long and gloomy winter. Let's start with some numbers. More than 12,000 people have been fired from Indian startups in 2022. That's 12,000 jobs in less than six months. 12,000 jobs gone. And this could be just the start. Experts are predicting more job cuts, almost 60,000 by the end of this year. Compare that to the pandemic years, startup jobs in India grew almost 14% in that period. So why are they downsizing now? Because there are no funds. Indian startups are struggling to find fresh money. And there are two big reasons for that. Number one, the poor economic outlook. Multiple banks are predicting a recession by the end of this year. India may not trigger that recession, but India will definitely be affected by it. So investors are a lot more cautious now. They're pulling money out of stocks out of cryptocurrencies, out of anything that is even remotely risky. Startups belong to that category, risky. There is no guarantee of success, so investors do not have the appetite to pump in money. Reason number two, the post-pandemic economic order, Indian startups simply aced the pandemic. They used innovation to surge ahead. But now things are returning to normal. People are back working in offices. Schools are open, restaurants have resumed service, so the pandemic era startups are struggling with demand. And the result is this, they're losing steam. Their finances are not letting them expand. Let me show you two reports. In the month of April, India had zero new unicorns. Quick side note, a unicorn is a startup valued at more than $1 billion. In the last year, India added a unicorn every month. But that streak ended in the month of April. Not a single unicorn company was born in that month, April. Now look at the second report. Indian startups raised $5.8 billion in March and April. I know it sounds impressive, but it's low compared to last year. Investments are down 15%. So what do startups do? They trim their finances by firing employees. All the big Indian startups have done this. Ola fired more than 2,000 employees. Cars 24 fired 600. Baiju 600. Unacademy more than 900. Employees have been laid off across industries. The question is, how can India stop this? A lot depends on the companies themselves. They will have to spend wisely on marketing, perhaps scale back on hiring, because the era of endless funding is frankly coming to an end. The next stage is about resilience, about fiscal responsibility. But the companies alone cannot manage it. The government too will have to intervene. India is home to 60,000 startups. Put together, they employ more than 7 lakh people, 700,000. So preserving them should be a national priority. The question is how? Some factors are beyond the government's control, like the global economic situation. Even American startups are laying off workers. They've fired 20,000 employees so far this year, 20,000 in six months. Big companies like Tesla are also trimming down. But here's what the government can control, perceptions. You see, investors are a very sensitive lot. They react even to the smallest bit of news. And one such piece of news has spooked the corporate world. India's new IT laws. They were drafted last year to reign in big tech. The biggest proposal was this. Social media intermediaries would be required to trace the first originator of messages, basically the source. The aim was to control fake news and hate speech. But the idea itself could be counterproductive. The Internet and Mobile Association of India has called this proposal, quote unquote, technically infeasible. They say it would not work in apps with end-to-end -end en encryption like WhatsApp or Instagram. And that's not all. They say the new IT rules could affect the ease of doing business in India. In other words, big tech may scale down their operations. Now, do you see the problem here? Yes, India needs regulation, but it also needs foreign investors and businesses. So striking a balance between the two will be key to India's startup ecosystem. Equally important is attracting foreign investment. In this economic atmosphere, everybody is looking for safe bets, especially foreign investors. So the government's job is to market India's potential to make Indian startups a safe bet. How do you do that? Through subsidies, through tax cuts, or by decluttering the logistics. If not, the Indian startup bubble may burst.
Instead of prancing unicorns, India could be stuck with zombie ones. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.